The Bidaya, or land dyaks of Borneo, have a myth that many years ago, a wife was left sick in a jungle field and was gone when her husband returned. Three years later, she reappeared, radiant in a costume crowned by a beautiful red hat. She said her soul had been saved by being taken in marriage by a god from the mountain. If other women in the village dressed in the same manner and made the right offerings, they too could become brides of the gods. After much work, the household of La Bear and his wife Minan can afford the festival for their women folk. The blessings that will win for the women may spread to the husband, La Bear. They have two younger daughters, Maria and Lamar, the youngest. Sitting with her cousin is Anchui, the oldest daughter. Gatil, with her grandson, is an aunt in ill health who blames it on to missing the ceremony when young. She has been invited to join in this one by Minan. The festival is a wedding of souls into the world of the gods. It is called Bangun, the awakening. Awaken to new life. The festival is prepared after the harvesting of the rice, grown in jungle fields like the one where Kumang Lalandai, the heroine of the myth, was found by her spiritual savior. Girls of any age may go through the ceremony, because in the world of the spirits, human age is not significant. So even though she is young, Maria may gain a spirit husband, which will be demonstrated publicly if she falls into trances. But often it is only older women who fall into trances. Nevertheless, the festival will initiate Maria and her younger sister into the community of the gods, where she will dwell in her dreams and find love sooner or later. Bidayo men respect their women as equals. The Bangun festival is for the women what headhunting was for the men, a source of honor and divine favor. So even though the Bangun means that the women will gain a soul life separate from them, the men help with it. To make for a sweeter festival, the giant tapang trees are climbed to gather the honey of the wild bees which nest there. The honey will be used in the cakes made for the festival and as a sweet for the children. Singing a special song to allay fears of the dangerous climb, the men gather the honeycombs at night, carrying flaming torches to scare away the bees. Because the red hats and regalia have to be made, and the pigs and chickens found and fed, the festival is still two months ahead, and ordinary life goes on. Yeah. Lamar is fishing for the evening meal. She is helped by her aunt, Kinoi, and her friend, Duleen. Although the shrimps and crabs and river snails are small, they are relish to go with the rice. Amongst the sticks and stones, anything may come up in the basket.
Minan and a priestess gather the Taring Lantai bamboo for the tops of the red hats, which are the most important item in the festival regalia. During the festival and for some time afterwards, Maria may not go to the jungle, so she stocks up on fuel for the household's cooking fire now. The priestess and Minan have to go further into the forest to get the prized ivory bamboo for the main parts of the red hats. After she becomes a member of the family of the gods through the festival, Maria may carry only a small shoulder basket made specially for her. So this is the last time, until the new corn has ripened in her household's field, that her brow will bear the weight of a heavy load. For her meeting with the gods, each girl must have the right costume and accessories. The hat is the crowning item, but she must also have a small coloured basket for carrying betel nut, a lime container to go inside it, a shoulder basket, a water carrier, a miniature fish trap, and a spear decorated with the feathers of the hornbill and argus pheasant to protect her on the way through the jungle to the mountain top. The grandmothers who have been through the ceremony and will be the priestesses are the most skilled at making the regalia. But unless very young, every girl should make at least some of the costume herself. <laughs> Minan instructs Maria on the easiest of the items, the shoulder basket. <laughs> The shoulder baskets may soon wear out. The hat and the betel nut basket will last many years and be enduring signs to human beings and the spirits that their wearers have passed through the Bangun ceremony and are divinely blessed. So the special designs must be followed carefully. Carving is a man's art. Grandfather Magoon makes the spears. Grandfather Chinai makes the red bamboo lime containers. Older women who have been through the ceremony reminisce. The drum is the road, says Mother Jagong, the priestess guide of many Bangun. Walk down the sound of the drum, but bear right when you meet the giant Bujang Baranti because the left-hand road leads to the world of the dead. I hear the giant stands up straight in front of you and is huge and strong and tall. I think I will be very frightened, says Minan. No, don't be frightened. He is the good giant who opens the way for you and you walk along the back of a great snake and come into a beautiful garden of Bunga Maba flowers, weeded by gentle grandmothers. The drum stops, you see the gods. I have been along the road of the drum many times. My spirit lover takes me into his own private flower garden. Then afterwards we go up to his house where he has many pigs, chickens and a brimming rice store. 
Must we obey the flute? asks Minan. When you hear the flute play, prepare to leave the mountain. Call your chickens back to their cages for the night. Let the lonely sound of the flute lead you back to the shady place that is this world. Pigs and chickens intended for it have to be fondly tended. Lama bathes a special pig, the soul of which is the god's wedding gift to the girls. She washes it through the aromatic leaves of the Bunga Maba plant, which was brought back by Kumang Lalandai from the god's garden for the people to grow in the sacred centers of their fields to protect the soul of the rice. Maria feeds the 40 chickens to be sacrificed. Helped by their grandmother, Anchui and Maria pound rice into flour for the sweet cakes, which are presented to the gods for their enjoyment at the festival and eaten by everybody. <laughs> Glutinous rice cooked in bamboo is a delicacy prepared for every festival. To prevent the bamboo burning before the rice is cooked, the mixture must go right to the bottom of the tube and contain the correct amount of water. Very many rice sticks are needed. Not only has the family to be feasted and the gods, their lovers, but all the spirits, good and bad, of the universe. The good spirits are invited to give blessings the bad cannot be turned away empty-handed. Glutinous rice is grown only for festival use. Two kinds of rice sticks are made, the smaller ones called pagang, and the larger called pankang. The burnt outer bamboo is shaven away to leave clean sticks for offering to gods or guests. The soft inner layer of bamboo will be peeled away to expose the cooked rice. <coughs> rice sticks are constantly provided for those at the festival or those getting ready for it. Offers must not be rejected, so large pieces can be broken off into reluctant hands. Or mouths if the hands are sleeping. <laughs> The chewing of slivers of the nut of the areca palm, loosely called the beetle nut palm, with lime wrapped in a leaf of the beetle tree, a species of pepper tree, is a stimulant and a symbol of womanhood.
At the end of every day's work, and at the beginning, and often several times in between, Maria and her friends bathe in the cool waters of the river running down from the mountain. The use of buttons on the hats is not new. The buttons probably came, as they come now, through trade links with China going back many centuries. The people believe this is the design of the hat brought back by Kumang Lalandai from her stay on the sacred mountain. A little blue and white porcelain jar, dating back perhaps to the Ming dynasty in China, will carry the girl's soul and those of her god-husband and his kinsmen, whom she will meet on the sacred mountain. It is swathed in white cloth and attached to a sling which she will wear over her right shoulder. The girls going through the ceremony will wear their soul jars in the evenings and usually when they work until after the next rice harvest. For a year, when visiting around the village, they will wear their red hats. The pattern is like the flame of a burning fire, like the hat of a queen. From her secret store, Priestess Ayang Jagong is about to stock the jars with souls. This is the soul of Maria, and there are four more souls of her family on the mountain. The small ones are grandchildren. The stones in the jars may multiply if the girls bear soul children by their gods, but only priestesses may look in the jars, and then only during New Year festivals. <laughs> To ensure a benign universe, Grandmother Linky climbs to the sky to deal with all bad forces there. She calls on friendly spirits of the heavens to help her fight soul thieves. Be off, spirits of sickness which steal a girl's soul, leaving her lonely as an island. She calls the souls home. There are offerings to the beneficent ancestral spirits and to all the forces, good and bad, in the wide countryside. We pray to you to nurse the young souls, to let them be healthy and happy forever. Early the next morning, the girls journey into the jungle on the mountain slopes to find a special tree of great significance. Priestesses who lead them on their bold venture scatter rice to appease the wild jungle souls to the left and to the right. <laughs> the girls have their spears to ward off dangerous demons. A minion card tree of the right size has been selected to serve as a ladder to link the bachelor's house in the God's village with the human world. 
With the offering of a chicken, the soul of the tree is asked to perform this role. The tree's soul is blessed by the sacred flower, which Kumang Lalandai brought back from the god's garden. When it has been initiated into its special role, the tree will be taken from the jungle back to the village to be erected on the longhouse veranda so that the gods may come down it or the girls climb up to meet them. From their home above the treetop, the gods look down upon the girls. Have no fear to marry these maidens. They have kept their promise to make red hats. Their bodies are as beautiful as the arching of the rainbow, as the breaking open of the dawn. The girls are impatient to join the gods. I burn to meet my lover, who is erect as a new fence at the edge of the field, as a honey tree standing alone in a clearing. Very sad and never solemn. Weddings are fun, especially magical weddings. Earthly tarnish is brushed away from the girls by the strokes of the betel nut bud. The dance in the jungle is only the first of many meetings between the girls and their divine lovers. The tree is cut down to carry back to the village. Periodically throughout the festival, the girls may fall into trance and at night when they dream, the gods will come down the tree to join them. Coconuts planted by girls who went through the ceremony decades ago provide a link between generations of initiates. The flourishing palms preserve the soul strength gained in the bangun, revitalized in each new ceremony. Their first brave expedition to the mountainside is over. The girls return to await a visit from their gods. The water from the special coconuts will be used to wash away evil from the door of the house and to bathe the girls. Some coconuts gathered earlier have been allowed to shoot and will be planted by the girls immediately after the ceremony. When it is erected on the outer veranda in front of Minan's house, the Mingyangkad tree will not only be a stairway to the gods, but an advertisement that her household is holding a bangun. The coconuts cannot be dropped to the ground, as is usually done, but must be carefully lowered, for if they fall, it is a sign that the sickness of Kumang Lalandai is not yet cured. On the morning of their marriage day, the girls are bathed and groomed by their elder women folk. The soul of my grandmother bathes me along the unopened flower of the betel nut gathered by virile bachelors climbing high. <laughs> Like honeycombs on the tapang tree, sweet offerings hang on the Mingyangkad branches where the gods will congregate. It is evening when the girls make their first journey. The tapers are to light them on their way. In dreams, their souls go forth to the sacred mountain to see their divine lovers. His turban is black with golden threads. 
His earrings shine like chilies. His necklace curved like the moon. His silver belt foam against the logs. His anklets flashing firelight. The blossoming plant from the gods' garden touches the crowns of their heads. The flowers fall loose, fluttering their eyes into drowsiness, into a deep trance. The drumming approaches the end of the road. And Chui is possessed by her god. Minan too has reached the mountain. The squealing pigs tell the gods their wedding gifts have been received. Passion impels Anchui up to join her god. divine union they fall. The lonely sound of the flute which makes one want to cry, recalling them to the shady world of humankind. Their moving hands feed the chickens at the close of day. Then they can leave their divine homes. <laughs> A special tree is used to make nests for the girls' souls. Turmeric, a species of ginger root, is smoothed over the wood to give warmth to the nest. A nest is made for each girl to hang above her bed. The hornbill birds can fly her soul while she dreams to the divine mountain. Dancing with the shooting coconut charges it with the soul strength of the girl gained in the bangun. The plant should be tended by her and her descendants, a new nut from it being grown each generation, so the palmers will preserve for all her line the health created by her connubium with the gods. Let the coconuts grow strong as the tooth of the leopard, their fronds bending to the open wind. Confetti at the wedding dance, the wood shavings are scattered over the crowns of the girls, telling their souls that their cosy nests are ready. At the beginning of the third day, the pigs are prepared for the wedding feast. The girls offer themselves in return. They are purified. Drain away all female sickness. The sickness of the child lying at the far end of the room, gasping like a hooked fish, the hollows at her collarbones deep enough for birds to bathe, the blood of the mother's heart spilling. The young girl asks him to talk softly, to whisper low, to tie his hair and her hair together. Amen. 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 
on the trance journey. She is the one who draws my mind and heart, fruit of my thoughts and speech in all the phases of the moon. At night, the priestesses call upon spirits everywhere to protect the girls. <coughs> the swings set up by the father for the mother to nurse the young souls. Let there be crowds of children following the jar of honey, jostling and mingling like coursing water. There is a honey tree of sweetmeats for the visiting gods. At midnight, trouble. An emissary from the earthly men, ludicrous compared to the gods, comes seeking their wives and daughters. Why have they all disappeared? <laughs> Silly man. Have some food for your starving stomachs. We can guess why your women have run away. 
for we don't know anyone called Mina, Gatil, Anchui, Mariar, or Lama. <laughs> To the gods, the girls have different names. We have only sparkling princess and golden lady. So look elsewhere for those poor, sad girls of yours. They know the men will be back, demanding compensation, and they won't just ask for family property. Sons of the household will be in danger. <laughs> this time the men bring their Raja to enforce their demands. Give up Maria, Lama and the others, or give up your property and your son. We don't have them. We have only Ninda Panti and Nida Amas. The seducers must pay. This chicken is our compensation for your suffering girls. Now they are princesses. <laughs> On the morning of the fourth day, the girls are carried to the clear gravel in the center of the river. This is the bathing place of the gods beneath their long house on the mountain to which the souls of the girls now belong. They cannot go to it along an ordinary village path, so men from Earth, acting as their slaves, carry them aloft. Muddy patches are hidden from the soul's eyes by a pathway of mats. bathing place, they will be cleansed of all blemishes and ill health, as befits brides of the gods. Then they may dance again, and in trance join with their divine lovers. When they are carried back to the longhouse after their bath, the girls will remain secluded in the house until the next four nights have passed. But the husband of Minan, Naba, also lives in the house. So to ensure that he brings no contamination in, he too is cleansed. The priestess draws the sickness into the upturned bowl. Draw out the dirt, draw out the colds and coughs, draw out the splinters and cuts, draw out the bad dreams, to be pure and healthy and forever free from harm. Lama is groomed to be beautiful for her spirit family. Bathing with the spirit of the guardian grandmother, the medicine is coloured like the king cobra at dawn, gleaming like bright moonlight to make the granddaughters dream happily. A tap on the crown from the sacred flower frees the souls that long for love. Oh, <laughs> 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 
The public displays of passion are finished. The girls are carried back to the longhouse for a honeymoon of dreams. For this and the next three days and nights, no earthly man may approach their beds. Strangers should keep away from the house altogether. For a total of 17 nights from the start of the festival, sexual relations are proscribed for all associated with it, women and men alike. The girls are on the mountain top, their spears and hats hung up. They are beyond the searching urgency of the trance. She's equal to me on the scales for weighing gold. We fit like the two sides of a knife sheath, like the leaves on each side of the rice stalk just before the flower breaks forth. Forever their souls are secure in the favor of the gods work in the countryside and no wild product should be brought in from it. It is a holiday time for everyone. So Dahan spends time showing the children how their fathers hunted with the blowpipe. The arrows were tipped with deadly poison from the epoch tree for real hunting or head hunting or fighting off head hunters. The effective range of a good huntsman may be up to 60 yards. <laughs> Simon gets his first lesson. After three nights on their dream honeymoon in the land of the gods, it is nearly time for the souls of the girls to return to the ordinary world. First, they are led by the priestesses on a fishing expedition. From their love marriages with the gods, soul children may be born, whose presence will show by new little stones in the soul jars. The soul children must be nourished, so it is down the divine river on the Aji Mpuri Anak Ihang the expedition to find growth medicine for the children of the souls. In the land of the gods, women are honored. Earthly men pole the boats.
sekitar tubuh. Ini dan kegogog itu. The priestesses are fishing in the river of the gods, where every little catch means a great catch. The success of their party belongs to all its members, and will beget future success for the girls whenever they fish for their godchildren or their children on earth. The girls themselves do not fish on this day. They may be pregnant with the gods' children, so they should be spared the strain of work. The party is to honor them and to nourish them. Also, the prestige of the party, and thus the power of its magic influence, is greater if those who do the fishing are the most skillful. The priestesses have fished for the gods many times before. Grandfather Chinai, the principal village priest, and the only man ever to have married a goddess, sets the girls' miniature fish traps, back to front, as fits the other world of the gods. Into each trap goes a first fish. Traps go back with the girls to the village to hang above their beds so that their souls can make all future fishing by the girls' souls successful. The shrimps and shellfish from the priestesses' baskets are the special delicacy to feed the children of the souls. But the feast also marks the return of the girls to ordinary life. During their seclusion, they ate only rice and a little preserved fish because they could dine with the gods. Now they come back again to the common foods of the fields and forest. The time for separation has come. The gods must now leave the girls to the shady world to unite with them again only in their dreams. Seated on the back of their hornbill bird, which carries them to and from the mountain top, the priestesses chant a farewell. Why go so soon? Because the cock is already crowing, the gibbon calling from the mountain, the squirrel climbing the coconut palm. The gods ascend the Mingyangkad ladder to their homes. Oh, 